Okay, so with the new vital behaviors that just came out, last week we talked about personal development. This week we're talking about the third new vital behavior, which is getting people results. And I feel like this one is super, super, super important. But I think that sometimes we have um, a misconstrued idea of what it means for us as coaches and what it's supposed to look like in our challengers. So that's really what I want to address tonight is what getting people results is and how we can help them do that and what we're technically responsible for um, when we're doing that. Because I think that sometimes we put a lot of pressure on ourselves as coaches to um, get people results and it's, it's not all on us. We can't do it for them. So the first thing I want you to do is I asked you to bring a pad of paper and a pen tonight and I want you to think back to you two years ago. Um, and maybe you were a coach two years ago. I was a coach two years ago, but I was a very different person two years ago than I even am today. And I've been thinking a lot about this as I'm going through this season in my life right now, because if this had happened two years ago, I wouldn't be able to handle it the way I'm, ha I'm handling it now because of who I was then. So I want you to take out that piece of paper and I want you to write down three words that you would use to describe the you of two years ago, just three words. And it can be about anything, your physical, your mental, your emotional, anything. So three words. So I'll go ahead and share mine. You don't have to share yours if you don't want to. Um, but I wrote down people pleaser. I wrote down thin. I was actually talking to Sarah about this the other day because I've been beating myself up over the scale and my body's a lot different now because I'm doing muscle building stuff now that I wasn't doing two years ago. Um, so it's not, not that my body is not good. It's just not the same. And then the other thing I wrote down is avoid conflict. So it wasn't just one word, but two words. So now what I want you to do is you can look at those three words um, that you wrote down about the you of two years ago, if you want to, for inspiration to the, for this next part, or you can just, you know, go, go do this. And then what I want you to do now is write down three words that describe you now. So you can use the words from two years ago to inspire words for now, or you can just come up with three completely different words. So I know I'm cutting some of you off. If you need time to write, go ahead and keep writing. That's totally fine. Um, I wrote down that I am confident that and I wrote down in big capital letters friendship because I now understand what friendship is. I'm not just looking for relationships. I'm looking for true friendships and secure. So let me tell you a little bit about my words from two years ago and my words from. Two. So two years ago, I was a people pleaser. I wanted to pretty much fit in. It didn't necessarily matter to me if I belonged. I wanted to fit in and I was pretty much willing to do whatever it took to try to fit in. Um, didn't necessarily feel like I was supposed to be there, but was trying to feel like I was supposed to be there. Today, much more focused on friendship. If I don't feel like I belong somewhere, I don't go. If something is difficult for me, but I know that it's where I belong, I make the point and effort to go. Um, two years ago, I was eager to please everybody and I avoided conflict. Today, I am very secure in who I am. I know what I believe, I know what I stand for, and I'm willing to fight for it. It doesn't necessarily mean I go around starting fights, but it does mean that if somebody goes against me, or um, does something, you know, that's not, not right to me, 
that I'm confident enough and secure enough in myself to stand up for myself. Um, and then I think also the secure part today, you know, four years ago when I started my journey with body, I was, oh, someone is not muted. I'm going to try to mute. Um, I was, uh, in a place where I was, it was very dark. I was struggling with postpartum depression and I was extremely embarrassed about that. In fact, if you've known me for those four years, I only started sharing about my postpartum depression about a year ago because it was a piece of my story I wasn't willing to expose because I, it made me feel weak and vulnerable. Today, I'm secure in the fact that I know that some of those things that I was doing to come overcome postpartum depression are self-care things. They're things that we need to be doing all the time, not just when we're in that deep, dark place. So right now, I know what I'm going to do this week to help me cope with the things that I'm struggling with right now, because I know that I have to prioritize myself and take care of myself. Four years ago, I wouldn't have done that. I would have been embarrassed. I would have been the ostrich to bury my head in the ground and avoid it because I didn't want anyone to think I was weak. Whereas now I know weakness is running and hiding my head and strength is going out and taking care of myself and doing what I need to do and being secure in that, being okay with sharing with people that I feel like I'm on the verge of a panic attack at any moment right now. Um, it doesn't make me weak to share that. So that brings me into this next piece. When we think of getting someone results in, their, in our programs, um, you have to remember that physical results may not happen as quickly as mental results do. And so understand that just because someone only lost five pounds on the 21 day fix, while somebody else over here lost 14, it doesn't mean that you failed them as a coach or that they did something wrong. Let's talk about how they look at food now. Let's talk about how they approach the ice cream container now. Let's talk about how they feel when they go up to the buffet at school when it's like a potluck or something. Let's talk about those things. Let's talk about, um, you know, the community that they now have, the, the idea that they're actually waking up and pushing play. They're doing something for themselves. They've invested in themselves. So... We have to kind of get away from feeling like the only um, uh, results that we can help people get are physical. Because some people are not going to lose pounds on the scale for a long time. And it doesn't mean that they're not getting results. You have to encourage your challengers when you're talking to them and when they're getting frustrated to look past what people can see and what they see when they look in the mirror. They have to start looking. Not a single one of my words for today had anything to do with my body. And none of them had anything to do with what anybody can see. All of them had something to do with how I feel. And to me, that is so much bigger than what pant size I'm wearing or what number the scale says or anything else, how much I'm, I'm curling, whatever. Those results are awesome. People can see that I'm smaller. People can see that I like going shopping now. People can see, you know, that I'm getting muscles where I've never had muscles. But what they can't see and what is probably most important is that I will stand up for myself now. I know my self-worth now. I know what I need to do to take care of me and I'm willing to take care of me before I try to take care of everyone else now. That is the biggest result and biggest accomplishment I've achieved in the last four years doing Beachbody. And so I really want you to start encouraging your challengers, if you're not already, to not just focus on the fact that they went down a pant size, but to focus on how they're feeling, how they're approaching fitness. Are they doing it because they hate their body or are they doing it because they love the way it makes them feel? Um, on Fridays in our challenge group for the next month, we're doing love over fear. And every single Friday is about them doing something out of love instead of doing it out of fear. Um, encourage your challengers to think like that. And I want to talk a little bit about how we can do that. 
And my number one answer is going to be host a banging challenge group. I mean, really, like if you are, are, if you are not excited to check into your challenge group every day, like if you're not like running to post your sweaty selfie, there's a problem with the group. <laughs> and it's not that you've been doing this so long that you just don't want to engage. It's that it's not engaging. It's not you. It's the group. And if you feel that way as the coach and the creator of the group, then your challengers feel that way too. And if they're not engaged, if they're not having fun, if they're not looking forward to the next thing, then you, you need to change something. You need to do something different because you will not get them results. They will not get themselves results if they're not excited about what's happening. Um, make it fun. Make it Make the accountability piece huge. Make them think, make them interact with one another. Make them engage with one another. Help them get to know people. The reason why our team is so kick ass is because we have a community. There are people coming to us saying, I wanna be on your team. I had someone message me the other day who was on our team like four years ago, quit, signed up with another team. She just came to me and said, I am going to end my discount coach with that team. I want to be on your team. I see the way you post. I see the way you put your heart and your faith out there. And I know this is where I belong. That's why people want to be with us. That's why you need to keep your challenge groups just as exciting and engaging and real and raw as we are in our team page. Take the things that we do in our business and use them in our fitness because that's how people stay the long haul. Those of you that have been coaching for a couple of years now, you've been coaching for a couple of years now because of this community. It's not been easy every day. There have been days where you've wanted to throw it in. There have been days when you've been like that bat and you just want to give it the middle finger. There have been days when, you know, you're just like, why? I just want to watch friends reruns. Like, you know, there, there's always something else. You're busy. Mom life is hard. Being a wife is hard. Um, you just want to sit on the couch and be a blob for a little while, or maybe like me right now, you just want to go and dwell in this negativity and, and sadness, but you can't because you got all these people who are like, where's happy Lindsay, where's unicorns and rainbows. We need her. And, but in hindsight, that's a really good thing because <laughs> it's forcing me out. But at the same time, you know, there, there are times when this is hard. There are times when you second guess whether or not it's worth giving up 30 minutes on Sunday night when you could be watching 90 Day Fiance with your husband and your jam jams, you know, but you keep showing up and you keep showing up because maybe it's one person on this team. Maybe it's your challenge group group that you run with. Maybe it's the whole team in general. Um, you something about them keeps drawing you back. And so you have to create that same community and your challenge groups. But here's the thing, just like in our business, I cannot come to your house and tell you, do your power hour, like right now, set a timer and do this. If you tell me that you wanna be making $500 a month by the end of the year, and I tell you how to do it, I can't come to your house and force you to do it. Same thing goes with our challengers, you guys. You have to supply them the tools. You have to give them an abundance of resources. You have to give them the community. You have to make it fun and engaging so where they, they feel like they missed something if they didn't check into your challenge group for the day. Um, but you can't go to their house and mix up their shake for them. You can't go to their house and slap their hand when they keep reaching into the cookie jar. You can't go to their house and push play and then force them through the workout. Like that's on them. They're adults and they made an investment in themselves and you can set them up and set them up and set them up. But if they're not willing to do it, then you are not responsible for their lack of results. You're not responsible for them not getting the physical or mental emotional results that they are wanting. Um, it's just the same, like I say this all the time to my kids. 
if, if, if you go home from the dentist and you don't brush your teeth for 180 days and then you come back to the dentist for a cleaning and you have a, a cavity, it's not the dentist's fault. They didn't do a bad job. You know, you didn't go home and brush your teeth for a long time. If, if my students do nothing in class and, you know, never do homework, never turn things in, fall asleep in the middle of my lesson, and they don't pass the end of grade test, that's not my fault. I've done everything in my power to set them up for success, to give them the tools, the resources, and my God, I don't think I could be more engaging in my classroom. But if they don't check in and do the stuff that they need to do on their own, they're not gonna succeed. And the challenge, the coaching business is the same way. Some of you, I see so much freaking potential in you. And we have conversations about how you want to be diamond or how you want to um, be making $3,000 a month so that you can stay home or how you want to do this and you want to do that. But when I say, well, what book are you reading? Oh, I'm not. Or where's your bat for the week? I don't do a bat. I can't, I can't feel responsible for you not hitting your goal, even though I want you to hit your goal just as bad as you do, because I can't go to your house and say, Allie, did you do your bat today? Like, I can't, I can't do that. Um, I'm, it's not physically possible and it would just be crazy. So you have to keep in mind that, you know, we're responsible for ourselves to a degree. All we can do for our challengers is, is set them up for success. And if they're not willing to push play or use the portion control containers or put down the soda or stop binge drinking on the weekends, like if they're not willing to do those things, then we're not, we're not responsible for that. We're, that is not on us. So I wanted, I wanted to say that because sometimes we take things really personal because we love what we do. This is something that we do because it's a passion. I would say 95% of the people on this call are part-time coaches. You, you go to work full-time and you do this because you love it, because it's changed your life and you're inspired and passionate about changing other people's lives. And so when we see someone struggling or not succeeding in the way that they want to succeed, we take it personally because we want it just as much for them as they do for themselves. And so, you know, it's, it's not your fault if you have a challenger who does the 21 day fix every single day, but her color coded containers are still wrapped in the cellophane. And she's not lost any weight because she's doing the workouts, she's doing her sweaty selfie, but she hasn't even opened or looked at the nutrition plan. That's not your fault. What you can do is explain to her, you need to be doing both. This is why, you know, the program's written specifically to be done this way. We made it easy with these color coded, like how much easier can it get? you know, and you can give them all the supports and resources and make it fun. I mean, I don't know, play bingo with your color coded portion control containers in your group. I don't know, but you can do all those things. And if they still don't use them, that's not on you. So don't take it personally. Do the best job you can show up every day. Remember, if you're not excited about what's happening in your challenge group, nobody else is going to be excited about it either. You have to be excited. If, if, you, if you feel like your challenge group is dying a slow death, then you need to do something. In the month of November, I'm gonna challenge you to do something you've never done before in your challenge groups so that it doesn't die. So that the person who signed up in January is still doing her workouts in December because we don't want people who are just New Year's resolution people and won't ever get the results because they give up on themselves by February 12th. We want people who are gonna stick it out. That also leads me to say, please be sure that you are recognizing people for the results they're getting. Let Make sure that you are shouting them out. You can shout them out in your group. You can shout them out publicly. I love shouting people out on my Instagram stories because it doesn't feel quite as um, scary, I guess, for someone who maybe isn't comfortable with their picture being out on social media on Facebook or something. It feels a little, I don't know, less formal. 
Um, make sure you're acknowledging that. I mean, something as simple as I went to um, Marshall's. I'm sure you guys know I love Marshall's. I like live there on Fridays. Um, a pack of five of these is like four dollars. There, it's a mask. You throw it in one of these envelopes. I, I got them all ready here to go. You throw it in one of these envelopes with a little card saying like, you rock, girlfriend, you look amazing. And that really makes someone's day. And that little gesture is not only going to keep them going, keep them getting more results, but they're probably going to say something to someone about this. If someone sees them wearing this mask, they're going to be like, my coach gave me this because I lost 10 pounds last month or I finished the 80 day obsession. So my coach sent me this and I'm so excited because it has a unicorn on it. Like that kind of thing is, it means the world to people and it's going to keep them coming back. It's going to keep them excited and engaged. And it's also going to keep them shouting you out because they love the fact that you are celebrating them. They did this. They're putting in the work. They're the one that has to wake up at the butt crack of dawn. They're the one that has to push play. They're the one that works through the sore muscles. They're the ones that turns down the cupcakes at the, at the uh, birthday party, or they're the ones that, you know, stop drinking soda because they realize it's bad for them, or they stop putting creamer in their coffee. Like they're the ones making the sacrifice. And sometimes when it feels like all we're doing is sacrificing time and money and good tasting sugar and all this stuff, it can be really hard to stay on track. And when you don't stay on track, you don't get results. In order to help people get results, we have to keep them coming back. So your job is not necessarily to be responsible for them pushing play and following the plan to a T. Your job is to get them to a place where they miss you if they're gone. If they go on vacation to another country and they can't check into the challenge group for a couple of days, you want them to miss you and you want them to know that you miss them. It's important. So the biggest takeaways from this, I want you to take your three words that you used to describe you two years ago. Take your three words that you use to describe yourself today. And I want you to take those words because chances are there's something in common with them. Weak, strong, uh, overweight, healthy, unhappy, happy. I mean, chances are they're related or connected somehow, or you can find a way to connect them somehow. So what I've just done for you is I've given you three Transformation Tuesday posts for the next month. You are going to talk about your results. It doesn't have to be a physical transformation. It can be, I shared a, I shared a transformation today on my Instagram, and it's not even a before after picture. It's a picture of me holding a picture of me and talking about the fact that it's really obvious that things are different physically. But what's not obvious and what's happening right now and what I'm experiencing right now is that things are a lot different mentally and emotionally. And if they weren't, I wouldn't be standing right now. And I have to be standing because I have kids to take care of. So talk about those things. You've got three things that described you two years ago. You've got three things that describe you today. Make three posts. And I want to challenge you a little bit further and encourage you to write the three posts tonight before you go to bed. Write them in the notes of your phone. Put them in three separate places. They don't have to be in the same note. You copy and paste one this Tuesday. You copy and paste one next Tuesday. You copy and paste one the third Tuesday. Because that's how you work ahead. That's how you make sure you're not trying to just keep up and drowning and keeping your nose above water while you're working the business. You get a little bit ahead, take five minutes to write the three posts tonight. I'll tell you what, if it takes you more than five minutes to write the post, stop writing because it's not coming from the heart. If it takes you that long to sit down and write a post, you need to stop writing it. It's not the time because it's not coming from real heart, soul, inside your feelings right now. Because if it was, you'd, you'd be like stumbling over your thumbs to get it written. Um, so start sharing your results. Make sure that you are shouting. Can we make a post in the group to share our posts? Yeah, Lindsay, that's a great idea. Will you do that for me? I can't see you, so I'm hoping you're giving me a thumbs up. <laughs> um, okay, awesome, thank you. 
Um, make sure that you do something different. So if you and your, and your challenge group people are sitting down to plan your next challenge group soon, um, yes, definitely put pictures with them, Jen. Pictures are the attention getter. Um, if you're sitting down to plan your next challenge group soon, this is my next challenge for you. Not only are you going to share those three transformations this month, you're going to do something in your challenge group that you've never done before. It could be a weekly water challenge. It could be a fun on when I'll give you our idea on Wednesdays. We're doing, um, like an additional workout challenge and like on Halloween, it's like how to burn off the Halloween candy and you know, just fun stuff like that. Like some, they're scary for a little bit. There's like a pumpkin challenge we're going to do. Um, on Fridays, we're doing the love over fear challenge, um, where you're, you're sharing something out of love over fear. Um, just come up with something you've never done before. Maybe you've never done bingo in your group. We've got a bingo card already created. Um, Allie, Lauren, Don, and I are chatting about what kind of giveaway to do. Yes, do a um, giveaway. Oh, I love November. That's such a great challenge group name. Um, yeah, take take the Rachel Hollis stuff. Do Five to Thrive. Do I mean, do the gratitude attitude in your in your group each week. Um, I mean, just do something you've never done before. Do something that gets people excited, engaged, and interacting. I know those aren't all E's. I was trying to go for another E, but I couldn't. At least they kind of sound the same. Um, but engaged, excited, and interacting. That is key in your challenge groups in order to get people results. The people who are falling asleep and dying off, you got to figure out a way to get them back because they're not going to get results or keep results if they do that. And we are different. That is not, um, that's like, you know, what happens when people just buy a DVD at Walmart and try to do it on their own? That's not what happens when they join our community because we won't let it happen. We are different. And then last but not least, don't hold yourself responsible. If you've got someone and you have done everything in your power to, to help them figure out the containers, to help them come up with a recipe they like for their shake, and they're just not doing it, it's not you. They're not ready. Focus on helping them with the mental aspect over the physical aspect, but don't take it personally. And that's what I wanted to say about getting people results. I think getting people results is really essential to our business because people need to believe that it's not just us up here doing this, that anybody can do it if they just surround themselves in the, with the right people. Um, and it's absolutely a vital behavior in order for our businesses to continue thriving. Are there any questions or ideas or anything anybody wants to say before we close for the evening? I love all these ideas. Grat we're doing a gratitude grace with a little grit, which is the sweat. Oh, I love that, Heather. That is so cute. We've actually been talking about something for the new year to do every month as a team. And we're talk like throwing around some names, like um, instead of like grit and grace, call it like fit and grace or something like a team wide challenge group. I like that a lot. Um, so Lindsay's going to make a post in our team page where um, we can actually go in like we can type up our posts and in our notepad in our uh, phone and then share them in the comments underneath her little graphic that she's going to post in the team page and then we can give each other feedback if you want like if maybe you're not you feel like it's not flowing or like the other day when i shared my income post i sent it to people before i posted it because i was like is this gross like is this really something people don't want to read and they're going to think i'm just being gross about money um before i posted it because i wanted real feedback um, yes, I will link this call to it and yes, I'll put it in the comments, Lindsay. That way people can watch it if they, if they need to love it. All right. Thank you, ladies. I really, 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 really appreciate you and love you so much. Thank you.